Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I, I would like to first thank my legal counsel, Ravi, for being there for me and having supported me throughout this journey. Um, I would like to invite Ravi up on stage as well. To... moment in the history of Singapore. For you Singaporeans, I'm so proud that you have finally exercised your right to freedom of assembly. And I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the last 10 years of struggling in the human rights law in Singapore. You have in this instance your tremendous support and thank you once again for your solidarity. And this last two weeks have been last two or three weeks have been quite a trying moment for Roy. And I wish and I look forward to your support and blessings in the challenging times ahead. And I thank you, Singapore. I, I actually have to read from a script because I cannot go out of point in case. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Singapore has come a long way in our country's history. Today, we are at a crossroads. Now, how can our country continue to grow while our people will be taken care of, protected, and cared for. Now as citizens who care for our country, as Singaporeans who have a stake in our country, it is our birthright and it is our responsibility to speak up, to voice out, so that we can create solutions for our country and better not only our lives, but that of our fellow men. Now, after nearly 50 years, Singapore might have a first world economy and we have first world costs. But do we have a first world government? No! Do we have a first world life? No! <laughs> now, today, many Singaporeans struggle with our lives, earning the lowest wages among the high income countries even as Singapore has become the most expensive place to live in the world. Yes! Now Singaporeans struggle to make ends meet and fear that we do not have enough to use. Now but this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't be where Singapore is today. Not when Singapore is now one of the richest countries in the world. Yes, this disparity shouldn't happen when our politicians are paid the highest salaries in the world. Yep. Yes, this shouldn't happen when Singaporeans struggle day by day. It shouldn't happen. Yes. Now, we are not envious of our government. Now, we do not. We are not people who are envious. Singaporeans are cool-headed people. We know that if we can trust you, we will stick true, thick and thin with you. Now, Singaporeans are humble people. We are reasonable people. Now, someone told me, for us Singaporeans, if you treat us well, we will treat you even better. Now we have integrity. We believe in justice. Yeah. Now we believe in fairness. Yeah. But when you betray our trust, 
Now we will not hold back and we will not take it lightly. Yeah. Now a government should protect its citizens. A government should put its citizens first and create policies that take care of the Singaporeans. And make sure that we are safe in our own country. Now the government has a responsibility to listen to its people, to be humble, and to work with the people. This is what the government should be doing. Now when Singaporeans talk about our CPFs, when we raise our concerns, it is the responsibility of the government to listen. Yeah. Now why do Singaporeans have to sell our homes? because we do not have enough to retire on. Yeah. Now why do Singaporeans have to sell our homes? Because we cannot pay for the medical bills. Why are elderly Singaporeans continue working? Because our CPF is not good enough for them to retire on. Yeah. Now if the CPF is not good enough, then can we still trust the government to take care of our CPS? <laughs> now today, our grandmothers and our grandfathers, they have to work as cleaners, odd job laborers, and cardboard collectors. 20 years ago, low income workers were earning $800. Today, they are still earning $800. Whoa. Whoa. Now, if they cannot retire, is it because they did not work hard enough? No. Or is it because they did not get paid enough? Yes. Now, last week, a Singaporean told me, the government makes me beg them, but I have my dignity. I also have my pride. Now, if I keep begging and the government does not help me, now why should I keep begging? Do our poor remain poor because they do not work hard enough? Is it right for our lower income Singaporeans to believe that they should remain poor because they are not good enough, not smart enough, not hardworking enough? No, it is not right. Our poor and our elderly workers work the longest hours in Singapore. Now if that is not hard working, what is? <laughs> Singaporeans are reasonable people. We are hard working people. We will work hard if we know that for the sake of our country, for our families, for our lives, we will work hard for it. But when we work so hard, and we realize that we are being taken for granted, then how can we still have faith in the government that they will protect our interests and our rights? They don't. Today, many Singaporeans cannot retire. Today, Singaporeans work very hard, but we cannot see our CPF. Today, we fear that we might not be safe in our own country. Now it is now a known fact that the government takes our CPF to invest in the GIC, the government's investment firm. The government takes our CPF to earn 6.5%, but they only give us back 2.5 to 4%. This is the lowest interest rates in the world. In the 1970s and 1980s, Singaporeans were earning 6.5% interest on our CPF. Now some of you might remember that. So why did the government push down our CPF interest rates to 2.5% in 1999 and kept it at a low 2.5% since 1999? Because they could! There was no opposition! Now Singaporeans today cannot retire because our CPF cannot grow. Our wages did not grow, our CPF interest rates did not grow, and today, that is why our CPF does not grow. 
But prices grew, housing prices grew, and the CPF minimum sum grew. Yep, sir. Why should the government be increasing the CPF minimum sum by more than 6% knowing full well that Singaporeans will never be able to grow our CPF fast enough to catch up with the CPF minimum sum? Now that is illogical. What is the government trying to do with our CPF? Now on the GIC's website, they had previously said that GIC manages the government reserves. But as to how the funds from the CPF money flow into the reserves, which can then be managed by either MAS, GIC and Tamasic, this is not made explicit to us. The, gov the GIC also said that the government, which is represented by the Ministry of Finance and its dealings with GIC, neither directs nor interferes in the company's investment decisions. It holds the board accountable for the overall portfolio performance. So the GIC claim that they do not know how they are using our CPF funds to invest. And the GIC claim that the government does not interfere in the GIC. So I repeat, the GIC claim that they do not know how they are using our CPF monies. But when you look at the GIC's board of directors, the chairman is a Singapore Prime Minister! The board of directors are the Deputy Prime Ministers and two ministers! Carmen, Chiu Chi Hien, Heng Sui Kiet, and Lim Heng Kiang. The senior advisor is Lee Kuan Yew. that the GIC does not know how they are using our CPF. How can it be possible that the government does not interfere in the GIC? Now then who is not telling the truth? Is the GIC not telling the truth? Or is the government not telling the truth? The GIC changed what they say on their website. Now it says, GIC, along with MAS, managed the proceeds from the securities invested and guaranteed by the government, which CPF board has invested in the CPF monies. So while the CPF monies are not directly transferred to GIC, for management, one of the sources of funds that goes into the government assets managed by GIC is the proceeds from SSGS or our CPF. Now what the government is saying is that our CPF, now what the GIC is saying is that our CPF is invested in government securities which goes into the government assets managed by the GIC. In short, the GIC manages our CPF. Oh, yeah. So from not knowing how our CPF is being invested in the GIC, suddenly the GIC and the government knows how our CPF is managed by the GIC. Why did the GIC suddenly change what they say and suddenly admit that they know how they are using our CPF. Now why did the GIC make this about turn? Why did the GIC change what they say after the information became public? So why did the GIC first tell us that they do not know that they are using our CPF and suddenly tell us that they do? Now all this while, the Singapore Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Ministers and the Ministers are on the Board of Directors of the GIC. 
So what game are they playing? Now, not only that, the fund managers at the GIC also are paid a fee to manage the funds in the GIC or our CPF. Now, how much is this fee? There is no transparency as to how much this is. Now, the ministers are currently paid millions of dollars from our taxpayers' money. How much more? Are they paid as fund managers from our CPF monies? Now does it make sense that the ministers are paid millions when Singaporeans are unable to take our CPF funds out? Now what we should ask is this. Should the Prime Minister of Singapore be on the board of the directors of GIC? the Deputy Prime Ministers and the Ministers be on the board of the GIC? Yeah. Is there a conflict of interest? Yeah. 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 Now who will protect our CPS money if the government is also the GIC? Nobody! <laughs> the GIC does not publish full reports on how they use our funds. Do we know what the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Ministers are using our funds for? No! Go, go, go. Now a few days ago, Tomasek Holdings wrote to the Straits Times to say that Tomasek Holdings does not invest or manage the, the savings of CPF members. Well, in the book, Development States, Relevancy, Redundancy or Reconfiguration, it was stated, since the late 1970s, CPS reserves, as part of public sector surplus, have been co-mingled with other invest investments, either domestically by Tomasek Holdings or abroad by the GIC. If so, does this mean that at one point in time, our CPF was invested in Tomasek Holdings. Yeah. If so, when did the government stop investing our CPF in the Tomasek Holdings? Never! After we lost money! Last year? A few years ago? Ten years ago? Can the government be transparent with us? Yeah. Now Tomasek Holdings earned a 16% interest rate. If our CPF was invested in the Tomasek Holdings, then we should get our interest back. Yeah. <laughs> now last year, I had also looked through several government websites and found specific evidence of how our CPF is invested in the Tomasek Holdings and GIC. From what I had gathered from several government websites, I was able to trace that our CPF monies are invested in bonds or special government, Singapore government securities, which are then invested in reserves, and which are managed by three agencies, the GIT, the Masse Holdings, and the MAF. However, last week, I checked on this website again. The government has now removed or changed some of this information on their websites. Now, Now you can no longer tell that your CPF is invested in the GIC and the Masse Holdings. First, the government removes information that our CPF is invested in the reserves. Next, the government removes information that shows directly that our reserves are managed by the GIC, the Masse Holdings and the MAS. So why did the government remove these two information? Why does the government does not want us to know that our CPF is invested in the GIC and the Masse Holdings? What is the government trying to hide? Yeah. Finally, in 
1993, President Ong Peng Chong wanted to fulfill his responsibilities as our elected president to protect our reserves and our CPF. Thank you, President Ong Peng Chong. President Ong Peng Chong asked the government to let him know how much there are in the reserves. The government told him that it would take 56 man years to count and let him know. But now, we know that the reserves are managed by the GIC, the Tomasic Holdings and the MAS. If so, the GIC, Tomasic Holdings and MAS should, would have kept full and proper records of how they are dealing with our money. So how can it be possible that it will take 56 man years for them to count how much there are in the reserves? Now, if the GIC, the Masai Holdings and MAS are not keeping proper records, then we have to question, are they handling our money properly? No! Can we trust them with our funds if they cannot keep proper records of our money? No! No! Now, about if they do keep proper records of our money, why did they tell President Ong Teng Chung that it will take 56 man years to let him know how much there are in our reserves? Now, President Ong Teng Chung had wanted to protect Singaporeans. President Ong Teng Chung had wanted to protect our CPS. President Ong Teng Chung had wanted to protect our reserves. Ong Chong was not allowed to know how much there are in our reserves. Then who else can be allowed to know? Then who will protect our money? Now there is no transparency. When there is no transparency, will there be honesty? When there is no transparency, will there be justice? No! Now when there is no transparency, will there be accountability? No! When there is no accountability, will we know what is happening to our CPF? No! Now when Singaporeans cannot retire, why? When Singaporeans cannot take our CPF out, why? Now when our CPF is trapped inside, why? When there is no transparency, can there be honesty? No! Greedy! <coughs> <laughs> so I ask again, did the GIC and Tamase Holdings use our CPF money? Yes! How long have they been using our money to earn for themselves? How much money has they earned from our CPF? Now we want full records, not just from today, but from all the years since 1974 when the Masai Holdings was set up. Now we want full transparency and we want full records and the government is listening to us today. Some of you are with us. Now we want transparency and we want full records. Yeah. Yeah. Now it is time the government stop tithing. Singaporeans have enough. The only way we will know is if the government shows us the records. Now show us the records. Tell us the truth. Be honest. With integrity to Singaporeans. Yeah. Yeah. Now I have spoken up. 
because I believe that as a government, there is a responsibility and a duty to the people. A government has to be honest and accountable to the people. A government has to be truthful to the people. A government has to be honest to the people. Now Singaporeans have a right to know where our CPF money is going. If we cannot retire, we have a right to know. Now to grow our CPF, the government has to increase our wages. To grow our CPF, the government has to increase the CPF interest rates. Now where now? Wages grow. When our CPF interest rates grow, our CPF will grow, and Singaporeans will be able to retire with dignity and with respect. So what we want is not the CPF minimum sum. The what we want. It's minimum wage. Yes. Now what we want is not for the government to take our CPF to earn high interest at the GIC and the market holdings. Now what we want is for our interest and our CPF earned to be returned back to Singaporeans. Yes. Now what we want is not for the government to take our CPF to use without telling Singaporeans. Yes. Now what we want is for Singaporeans to be consulted on before the government takes our money to use. Yes. Now what we want is not for the government to tell us that it is not in our interest to know what they are doing with our CPF money. Now what we want is transparency and accountability. Now the CPF is our money. We, the citizens of Singapore, are the owners of our money. Now we, the citizens of Singapore, are the owners of our country. It is our right to decide what to do with our CPF money. Now it is not the prerogative of the government to decide what they want to do with our CPF money and to tell us, take it or leave it. No, it is not. It is the responsibility of the government to listen to us, the citizens of Singapore, and to do what we want them to do. Now this is what the government should do. It is the responsibility of the government to act in accordance to Singaporeans' wants and not make Singaporeans act in accordance to what they want. Now we, the citizens of Singapore, decide us who will be voted into the government. Now we will use our votes wisely. Now it is the government that should listen to the people and not the other way round. Instead of 2.5%, Singaporeans should be earning a much higher interest on our CPF. Instead of only receiving a few hundred dollars from our CPF payout, Singaporeans should be receiving a much higher payout. Instead of having our retirement funds trapped inside the CPF, yes. Singaporeans should be, waive, should be able to withdraw it and to opt out from the CPF minimum sum and the CPF life. Yeah. Now if the GIC and the Masi Holdings take our CPF money to invest, then we demand full transparency, yes. accountability and full reports yes, on how our, how our CPF yes. monies are being used.
No, it is. It is the duty of the government to listen, to answer, and to respond. It is not right if the government chooses to stop Singaporeans for asking these questions. We have a right. Singaporeans, we have a right. When we see our elderly working as cleaners, or job laborers, cardboard collectors, is it right that after giving their lives to Singapore to build what it is today, that we have to continue to make them toil and work? No. Do the ministers have the heart no. to see our elderly work like that? Now, as Singaporeans, as a society, we have a responsibility to our elders. If they want to work, we have to respect that. But if they want to rest and finally spend some time for themselves in their golden years, we have a responsibility as a people to ensure that they are able to do so. Now, when we see Singaporeans who earn low wages, is it right that we judge them and think that they're earning low wages because they are not working hard enough? As a people, we have to value one another and all Singaporeans equally. No matter whether you're a CEO, a cleaner, a teacher, or a nurse, or the Prime Minister. Yeah. Each and every life is valuable. Yeah. 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 Each and every life should be respected. Yeah. Now each and every life has to be honored. Yeah. Now we are Singaporeans. We have to protect one another. Yes. Now we have to treat our people with dignity, with pride, and with kindness, and pay them right. Now when we see our families with children, is it right to leave them? to leave our families to fend for themselves, to pay for expensive health care and education. Now as a society, we have a responsibility to our community and to our families to take care of them and to take care of one another. We have a duty to protect the members of our community and our larger families. Singaporeans, if we rise together, our country will grow! Yeah. Now if we fight together, yeah. our country will grow! Yeah. Now we have to speak up, and we have to do what is right for ourselves. Because we are the citizens of Singapore! Yeah. at the crossroads. Yep. Where do we go from here? Yep. Change <laughs> Singapore is our country. Yeah. Singapore is our home. Yeah. Today I have spoken up and so have many others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Amen. All of you have rise. Now all of us have shown courage. Now many people have spoken up, sent messages, and supported me in this journey. I thank you, and I am grateful. Now I am an ordinary Singaporean. I want to, I want to speak up before because I care for our country. Now we speak up because all of us care for our country. And that is why so many of you are here today. Now today we have spoken up and today we have made ourselves heard. Today is a new beginning and we must take it like a new beginning. Now today, Singaporeans will come together and chart a new journey. And chart a new direction for our country and our future. We love you, Roy! Now no more shall we keep quiet. Fight, Roy! Now no more shall we be shy. And we will continue to fight. Now I believe that one day our people will be free, respected, and equal as we once were. I believe that we can live our lives happy, together, and hopeful for our children. Now I believe in a society where our all are able to retire with dignity. I believe in a society where our poor are not poor, but rich. Where our families are strong and where Singaporeans are proud and confident of who we are. Now I believe that we, that one day, all of us will speak from our hearts to care for one another and to care for the person next to us. Now I believe that we can see a more equal, a happier, a just, and dignify Singapore and Singaporeans today in a lifetime. Yeah. Now this is what I believe. Now when we believe, we can make it happen. When we believe from deep within our hearts, Find the strength from deep within and believe in ourselves. We can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Now when we believe, we can see the future that we have always wished. Go in front of our very eyes. Now if we have the courage and we believe and we hold on to it. The Singapore that we won will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Now many of us have dreams and hopes for a beautiful future and a new Singapore. Now just believe 
stay true, stay united. It is time. Stop the bullying. If we believe, let's make it happen now. If we believe, let's make it happen. Now it's time, my friends. The time for change is now. Take heart. Take pride. Stay strong. Stay strong and we will make it happen. Majula Singapura! Yeah!